Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome to a new art journal layout. I'm working on my new, brand new, The Illusions uh, art journal. I do have more than one art journal that I'm working on at the same time, but today I decided to go with my Dilusions one. So I'm going to work on my background using Distress Oxide inks, which I am applying with my blending tools. Now today you will also see that I'm going to use some new toys by Tim Holtz that have just been released, so I'm going to bring into play some new colors of Distress Oxide things. I'm also going to use the new brushes, as well as the new Distress Resist spray. But first I'm applying my color, a first layer of color all over the place. The page on the Dilutions uh, a journal takes uh, Distress Oxide ink beautifully. I'm not going for the perfect application here, I just want to have a first layer of color, so notice that nothing looks perfectly blended. Now, these are the two colors that I used, you can see them on screen. I'm spraying with water, which is going to oxidize the ink and it's going to make it look more chalky and more faded. Now I'm doing a very fun technique, I'm using a stencil with letters and with a baby wipe I'm just going over those uh, letters. Actually I'm lifting the color from underneath which is going to give a lovely faded look at the background. You are able to see the effect better on uh, the areas that are darker at the moment but as the moisture dries on top of the paper it's going to show even more everywhere. Now I'm going to do some stenciling again, but this time I'm going to apply some Distress Oxide ink with the new brushes. These are the blending brushes that have just came up by Tim Holtz. So these are really awesome to use, they are lots of fun and um, they are not going to actually replace your blending tools, but uh, it's a great uh, accessory to have so you can uh, do blending in a totally different way. You can see that it is retractable, so you can, so you can easily put the cap back on. And what I like about those brushes is that they don't apply as much color as with the blending tool. So that's why they are a great tool to have as an add-on for your blending uh, techniques. And I hope you can see that it applies a soft layer of ink, which is not the case if I was using the blending tools, where that gives you a more concentrated look. Now, as you can see, I do have uh, seven different uh, brushes of those. You really don't need to have one brush for every color. You can use uh, one brush for every color family. So one red, one orange, one yellow and so on. Now I need more concentrated color at the edges since I always like to keep my edges darker because I feel that it kind of frames my art nicely. So I went back to my blending tool and I'm going around the edges with Distress Oxide ink and that's gathered twigs. Now as always you will find a full list of all the supplies that I'm using for this layout down below in the description area as well as on my blog. I have some water on my glass mat that I'm taking with my brush and adding some splashes. The water is going to react with the stress oxide ink on top of my background and it's going to lift the color and uh, create some beautiful splashes which are perfect for my background. You can leave for a few seconds the water to react with the ink and then just blot it with uh, a clean cloth. And now I'm just going to use my heat gun to make sure that everything is nice and dry so that I can move on to the next step. So now I'm going to repeat uh, the idea of splashes. This time I'm going to use Gather Twigs, which is the color that I used for the edges. I have um, added some on my glass mat and uh, dilute it with water so that I can do the splashes. Then I'm going to move on and do splashes with the green color that I used for my background, which is Built Paint. And notice that I'm working with the colors that I already have on my background, since I don't want to introduce a new color, which would make my background look very busy. And this is where I wasn't happy with uh, how dark my edges were looking, so I'm going back, and this time I'm adding Distress Oxide Ink Black Suit. So that's how my background is looking at the moment, and since I do have the Distress Resist spray, I thought that it would be fun to give it a try, so this is the first time I'm going to use it. Make sure that you are going to place your uh, paper inside the box, because this is actually glue and it's going to spread all over the place and you don't want to destroy anything around your area. So now I'm going to place my stencil in there. I'm going to spray over the stencil a couple of times. Now this spray is going to give you dimension 
and um, at the same time it's going to give you a nice shine it's not very shiny like uh, if you used um, glossy accents now make sure that you wash your stencil or you put it inside some water until you wash it at the sink and let's take out this uh, arsenal, let it dry and let's see the effect you can leave it to dry it uh, really dries quite quickly I used my heat gun and um, it doesn't bubble up on you, so that's great. Now where this uh, resist spray is going to dry, it's going to resist the distress oxiding, which is exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm applying uh, gather twigs over it and hopefully you can see the result there. It really looks embossed because when you touch it, it does have dimension and a wonderful texture. It's not smooth at all. And you can see now that on my background, using the same stencil, I do have two different looks. You can use the resist spray to do embossing if you like. I'm not going to do that for this uh, layout. I was super happy with how this came out. I got the embossed look at the same time I got the resist uh, technique and uh, a beautiful texture. So I'm super happy with that. Now for my focal points, I'm going to use these three dies and combine different cutouts to create a little uh, scene. So I'm going to use the um, Apothecary Bottles Big Die. This is an oldie but goodie. I keep on using it again and again. I'm going to use the largest of the bottles from this die because they are, it actually gives you three different designs. And I'm also going to use the label. Now I'm cutting out the butterflies. These come from the mini detailed butterflies uh, die set. And I have also cut out some branches from the wildflowers to die set. Now this is how I colored everything. I just applied some uh, distress oxiding on top of my glass mat, sprayed with water and then I'm applying my die cuts on top of them. This way I'm going to end up having a um, mix of colors so nothing is going to look uh, very flat. I'm just uh, drying everything. I can dip that on top of uh, my ink there one more time to get more variation of color. And I actually repeated the same process for pretty much everything. So here is another variation using two green tones of my Distress Oxide inks. And I did uh, put into the mix the new colors as well. So I'm dipping again, super easy to do and gives you great results. Just remember that when it dries it's going to look more chalky since uh, the ink actually reacts with water and it's uh, not going to look as vibrant as it looks uh, at the moment you dip it. So one more time to get more color variation. And uh, once finished with all the branches and the flowers I had cut out, I did the exact same technique for my butterflies. So again, adding two different uh, colors of ink on my craft mat, dipping the butterfly. I'm going to leave this butterfly to dry and then move on to the second butterfly where I used two different shades of blue. And here I go again, same technique. So I'm actually having fun with my die cuts, my different colors and um, getting my fingers inky, which really makes me happy. I'm also going to show you which colors I used for coloring the bottle, which you can see them on screen right now. So that's Pilt Paint and uh, anti cleanen which is one of the new colors. I'm also going to add some shading on the edges just to make it look more round and I want my bottle to have the same look as my background and that's why I'm going to add some uh, splashes on top of it just apply the splashes of water there and then with a cloth I'm just blot it and you can see the beautiful design I just love those splashes anyway I am going to do some splashes with the darker brown And before I stick everything on top of my layout, I decided to do some stamping on my background. For that I'm using archival ink and that's coffee. And the stamps I'm using are by an older Tim Holtz collection, which is called Etc. So I'm not going to cut off the stamping, I'm just going to let you see what I did there. And as I'm doing that, I can give you a little bit of a live update. 
So I was at uh, Phoenix, Arizona for Creativation, where I got to see um, lots of friends. I met uh, lots of designers and uh, saw all the new products. I saw lots of demos and it was wonderful. I had a great time. Although it was quite difficult to come back, it took me actually 48 hours to get back home since um, there was a mechanical problem in one of our flights. And then I had to add 24 hours of uh, journey into my uh, way back home. But anyway, it was great. I'm safely home now. It was totally worth it. I am so inspired by all the wonderful uh, things that I saw there. And uh, you will see lots and lots of new products coming on my videos. Anyway, now back to the project. I am doing some stamping on uh, my bottle. And now I have all my elements ready to go so I can start sticking everything down. For that I'm using my matte medium, but you can use pretty much any glue that you like. I just have this uh, on top of my table and it's always easy to grab. Now I'm using one of my black uh, pens to add some shading. I'm just doodling around the bottle and I will add some black lines around my flowers which is going to help them to define them more and help them pop against the background. Now this uh, actually reacts with water so I will come back later on with a wet brush and I'm just going to blend them out so that I don't end up with uh, too much of a harsh line around my flowers there. And because I cannot stay away from my white gel pen, again I'm going to add, just like with every page, some highlights with my white Signo gel pen. Around the bottle, around uh, the butterflies. Now if you find that your uh, white gel pen doesn't uh, work as fine as you want to, Try to start it out on your finger, it warms the tip and it really makes a whole lot of difference. Now I have applied a dot of uh, white gesso on my glass mat. I have diluted that with water and now with a thin brush I'm going to add some white splashes at the background. Because I can never be happy with my background I can add more and more on top of that. And now I have that label that I have cut out using the C6 die and on top of that I'm going to use um, these stickers by Tim Holtz, one of the, his uh, booklets, that says um, believe in yourself. So I'm going to stick that on top of my bottle. And since everything has a black line around it like uh, the plants as well as the bottle, I am going to add some doodling with my black pen around the um, label as well, which is going to help it stand against the bottle even more. This is an alphabet stamp set by Concord and Ninth that I absolutely love. When you stamp one letter next to the other, it looks as if you have a beautiful handwriting. The word I am stamping is anything is possible. And notice how I stamp the word from uh, the center to the sides because this way I can center it nicely on my page. As always I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some highlighting on all the letters which uh, is going to help them uh, stand against the background. Just a white line, it really makes a big difference. And uh, you can call this page done, but I always like to have different textures. So this is where I got the idea to wrap this twine around my bottleneck. So I'm using a needle to do so because I didn't thought of that at the beginning before I used the glue to stick down my bottle. So I'm going to wrap it three times around the bottleneck and then I'm going to thread one of those little uh, metal embellishments and tie a knot. 
And don't forget to put antennas on your butterflies. And that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. As promised, I will be posting more art journals this year, so stay tuned. Don't forget to share this video if you like it and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already because this is the way to tell me that you like my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all for watching.